To say it's been a rough day for everyone at CrowdStrike is a massive understatement. Not only did CrowdStrike basically take down every Windows PC running their Windows Defender plugin, but they also caused what is now accepted to be probably the largest and most expensive cybersecurity incident in the history of having computers at all. And there were only a few people like the Japanese who run all of their infrastructure on Windows 2000, and then of course everyone who just uses Linux or Mac OS, which ironically seems to encompass most of the local LLM community. And with a little bit of time, we now know what caused this problem. It was a C coding error that caused a buffer overflow. And although that's a very elementary school level mistake, it managed to get past all of the professional engineers at CrowdStrike and was pushed out to literally billions of computers and that's what caused this whole thing. Now, ironically, someone posed the question on Twitter of whether or not we could use an LLM to actually solve this, which begs the question if whoever the developer who wrote this bug happened to be using, let's say, Deep Sea Coder on a local machine, actually just running on their CPU, not even their GPU, could it have actually caught this or understood what was going on if presented the correct amount of evidence? So Nistin, who's an AI developer on Twitter, managed to ask this question. And although on the first shot, we have to be honest, it didn't exactly get it in one shot, but uh, I was able to reproduce this and it does appear that Deep Seek Coder, when given enough context, does actually manage to catch the exact C coding error when presented all of the evidence. And I wanna get into exactly what that evidence is. So the question is, could open source LLMs have prevented CrowdStrike from causing the largest cybersecurity incident in history? We're gonna answer that question now, so welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So the question is, why was this model actually picked? And I think this model was picked because it's completely open, it's been now fine-tuned and optimized into a GGUF format, which means you can run it on a CPU, and can run it at a decent speed just on CPU cores, not even using a GPU. Of course, in this case, this is running on 48 CPU cores, and just a bit later, I'll get into the exact specs you would need to run this if you happen to want to run it on a GPU. And what's really cool is, in theory, you can hoard this model away on like a 300 gig flash drive. And if there was ever a time to download a model and hoard it somewhere, just in case something was to happen to it, I think this would be one of those models. So obviously, I've talked about Deep Seek Coder before. And we know that this is basically one of the best coding models that is available today. And it's been fine-tuned nearly to the edge of its life. And the really cool thing is we're now seeing really great versions of this model that purely run on CPU and that run on Apple Silicon. And with even more code completion models coming out and more tools to run these as co-pilots, we're sort of entering the golden era of the local co-pilot, ironically just as GitHub Copilot is starting to charge like ridiculous amounts of money to use their service, a service that's now completely outclassed by free local LLMs. So I wanna get into what Nistin actually provided here because obviously initially this test was not entirely accurate in that um, it, when presented the issue, it didn't necessarily get the exact solution on the first shot. And it does kind of assume that the developer using this in the fictitious scenario we've laid out here, where they're trying to fix this huge cybersecurity incident, had a little bit of knowledge of what was going on and wasn't just a completely clueless intern. So initially, this is just focusing on a computer that has been compromised with this CrowdStrike update and how to fix it, not necessarily how to fix the actual CrowdStrike infrastructure that was then causing this entire problem. So what's said here, or at least the first prompt here, and we'll get into the full prompt in just a bit, is how to delete the CrowdStrike update file from the Windows bootloader, update got messed up and boot looped half the planet's PCs, lol. So it gives you some basic troubleshooting instructions here, basically getting into safe mode and doing some very careful removal of CrowdStrike tools. Now, if you've done stuff in Windows before and you know I take pride in basically not using Windows at all for a better part of the last decade, You'll know that if you do this now, um, Boot Locker and a few other things that sort of try to protect Windows will not necessarily have this fix work, but it's a great place to start. And in theory, for some of these users, it would work depending on how far it got through the update. And then the next question is, he says, okay, but WTF does CrowdStrike even have to do with Windows boot and what are their files usually named like? So this is asking where CrowdStrike files actually interact with Windows, more specifically Windows Defender. And this is a prompt that someone trying to diagnose this at CrowdStrike could have used, or in theory in the near distant future, 
maybe an SRE agent would use when trying to respond to customers freaking out that all of their computers are now boot looping and have no clue what to do. And it gives some insight here, but it's not exactly perfect. So to say this solved everything outright, you know, it's an impressive amount of troubleshooting coming from a relatively naive LLM, but it's pretty cool. And of course, some other people called out like, hey, this isn't exactly the right file, it's close. And of course, the answer to respond to this is, well, with enough context, if you fed in all of the Windows core dumps, you probably would have gotten something a bit more specific. So Nistin eventually comes back and gives us the full system prompt. And what's interesting here is it's kind of comical. Like this isn't something that's like wildly um, that straightforward. You know, it, it, the irony is that this probably assumes that DeepSeek understands John C. Carmack is one of the most famous prolific software engineers of our time most famously known for making the video game Doom. So the system prompt here is, adopt the persona of a hilariously pissed off John C. Carmack who uses lots of emojis and markdown formatting to answer every question perfectly while also carrying forward the conversion and project work but also cursing widely at the user and being psychologically unstable but in a hilarious, super informative, psychopathic but benevolent way. You're also high on uh, things that make you think faster and keep leaking alpha on other companies. And then he asks a really basic question here since he is actually located in Toronto. Now, I was able to run this and I'm not going to post the core dumps of the issues with, with CrowdStrike because there's some other channels that have done that and had their videos taken down. But I was curious to see that it did actually find some very similar insights to, to what some software engineers who work in C have posted on Twitter regarding the very basic error that was made by someone at CrowdStrike. So the question is, how much RAM do you need to run this, whether or not you're just doing it on a CPU or even a GPU? And what's cool is basically, if you want to just run the, uh, the four bit quant, you really only need around uh, 192 gigs of RAM and something like an M2 Mac Ultra. And you have to limit some of the context length, but you can still run it. And for the eight bit precision, you do need uh, 256 gigabytes. And that's kind of a lot for most people, but granted that amount of DDR4 is still cheaper than that, an equivalent size GPU with that much RAM. And there are also a number of other ways to run Deep Sea Coder locally, and there are lots of quants available. And I'm actually going to link below to the specific quant that is small enough to fit on a single flash drive. This is the Hugging Face page for this. So the specific, so the specific quant is also made available by Nistin. So it's DeepSeq 0628 GGUF, which is basically a CPU optimized quant of DeepSeq V2 Chat uh, 0628, which is basically just the latest iteration of DeepSeq that is currently ranked seventh globally on the LMSYS arena. What I do like about this is this is already set up to use uh, the RA2 downloader, which if you download a bunch of models from Hugging Face, I like wildly recommend doing that because just pulling it from Git LFS is a massive pain. And obviously there are a number of versions here. There are CPU versions um, initially. And if you want to download everything, it's about a terabyte. And that's by everything, I mean like every different size of this quant. But there are a number of great CPU versions available and I'll include that quant below. And for instance, this quant here, uh, the one bit quant, which is the smallest, is only 73 gigs. And there, are no, and there are a number of other versions that are just a bit larger, but are still quite good, especially um, the full brain versions if you have the hard drive space to kind of sock these away somewhere. So I'll link below to which link you should use with ARIA2. I'm curious if you guys have tried prompting this question to say Cloud 3.5 or your favorite coding model. I'm really excited to try to feed this into Codestrol Mamba 2, specifically the uh, the Windows kind of core dump that really gives the most insight to what's going on here. And I think it'll be cool to see if that massive context window with that Mistral model actually helps this work. So I think it's a really great example of how these models can be used in the real world and how close we are to having uh, agents that can act as site reliability engineers or that can actually aid engineers in fixing problems like this and to me, it's cool just how close we are. And frankly, these tools are faster than just digging through the internet or digging through documentation because a lot of that has already been fed into them. And if it hasn't, then the context windows are large enough that if you feed them specifically what you need and give them a proper system prompt, then you can get something really interesting. And obviously the key to this, 
And obviously another really important part of the key to making this work is having a concise and well-crafted system prompt. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you think this is cool or if you think it was maybe a little bit misleading. And if you guys have used models like this to help do other kind of SRE or quick troubleshooting tasks before. So as always, I hope you learned something. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one.